So another episode of the playing series. Now the last one was like a day in the life and with this one I want to extend it a bit longer. Just see what you think about slightly longer videos. Because the videos I've been watching on YouTube, the ones that I get into, is mainly like fitness vloggers. They're like half an hour and I'm properly into it for half an hour so previous ones have been like 10-12 minutes so we're going to try and extend this one a bit further. So we're going to split it over three days. Today is a chance for me to hit my balls which you've probably seen enough of already. I've then got a gym session which I'm going to show you a bit of. Then I've got PT in this evening. Tomorrow I'm going to work on my short game pretty much all day which I haven't. It's kind of been neglected but I've been working on the things that I needed to work on in the swing. And then Friday um, I'm going to play 18 holes. So that's the main, the main purpose behind this vlog is to take what I've been doing on the range and tomorrow on the chipping area and actually take it to the course and just see what we can shoot. And it's going to be very honest could shoot a lot I have no idea how you, you know like you can you, you can feel sometimes when you make a change it can feel good on the range and you take it to the course and it's just like fucking hell so we're gonna see build up to the, the Friday we get you some on course footage and also I'm gonna get all my stats from that round so thanks for clicking on and I hope you get through this let me know what you think about this new vlog length gym after a pretty good range session I can't believe how well this driver is flying now so one of the changes are changes to my dynamic loft and with driver I always used to struggle with anything over what was like a long drive driver so anything like eight degrees up because my dynamic loft was not great so at impact I would almost like add loft which would add spin but now I'm almost taking dynamic loft off the flight is like a low fade, which is not spinning. It's, it looks like it's coming so far. And my clubhead speed, it feels like, and it always does when I try and cover it and use the big muscles to get the body across instead of like driving it and flipping it. Clubhead speed's gone up. So I reckon I'm probably like mid 120s driver swing on the golf course, hitting like a low burner fade. And it's, I reckon it's going miles. So you could say that on the course soon. Definitely started using muscles that I haven't used in a while kind of neglected training for aesthetics so I've got doms I did boxing yesterday as well which is further added to those doms but it's good to loosen up a bit on the golf course feel way better after hitting some balls and uh, yeah so we've got strength two today it's the second strength session of the week or second lifting session of the week I'm just going to show you the four exercises now Yes, just got down to the Exeter Uni chipping area, which is like five minutes around the corner from my house. Now they've got this like all weather chipping area, Astro, with a few bunkers and a putting green down the bottom. This is not an ideal place to be practicing short game just because the greens are like 20 on the stint and it's quite obviously hitting off like hard mats. But I'm still waiting to actually join a club that have got like decent chipping facilities. So for the time being, this will have to do to get my game in shape for tomorrow. So I think what I'm going to do now is a little Q&A whilst I show you some shots. Uh, and answer the questions about in the community a couple of days ago. So before I actually get into this Q&A, I just want to just say a few things about my chipping and pitching technique. I feel like without really trying to work on this exclusively, it's um, it's benefited from the stuff I'm trying to do in my full swing. So take it the club back on the right line and not be like right shoulder high, club closed. So getting the club to roll open a bit more. 
this is probably the best my pitch and chipping has felt. Strike was really good throughout and uh, I'm bottoming out in the right place. So really happy with that and um, looking really looking forward to playing tomorrow actually. So here we go. Let's um, let's answer a few of these. All right, Luke Parker. What about golf makes you love it the most? What really made you want to dedicate your life to the sport? That's a good question and a pretty deep one to get started on. So, although I've had a break from golf, I'm now back into it. And before the break, I was playing golf from the age of like 12, um, and now I'm really back into it and wanting to push forward and obviously compete at a decent level. I think the thing that makes you love it the most, I always like to have something to work towards. Uh, and if I'm not working towards something, I just feel completely lost. So golf is probably the hardest fucking thing that you can try to actually get good at. It's demoralizing, it's savage. But that, I, I, I've, I actually really like that about golf. The fact that you will get to a point where you think that you've cracked it and you know you've made changes and you're striking it really well you go out on the course and it's just like what has happened it's an ongoing battle so with that kind of battle when you actually do get to where you want to go or like your short-term goal it just feels amazing so i kind of feel like that is probably one of the biggest reasons why i'm dedicating myself to it is because as i said to flower the other day it's a noble quest a huge what made you choose to go with Callaway Clubs? So when I got back into YouTube and I started out doing vlogs for Long Drive, to compete in Long Drive, Callaway, I actually spoke to Callaway first because Callaway were the, one of the only brands in golf that actually do Long Drive and normal golf. So it's just a, a pretty, you know, a natural fit to, to have me doing Callaway because I can use their long drive equipment and also use their golf clubs in the videos as well. And since then, our relationships, excuse me, our relationships kind of progressed into this year and I'm really happy with the Callaway equipment. Definitely the nicest equipment that I've played. These MB blades are just like proper pure. The drive that I'm using, the, the Epic, is um, very nice as well. The wedges and the Odyssey putter that I'm that I'm using and the one that I'm currently waiting for just couldn't be happy with all of it and they've been good as well set me up with you know the stuff with the British Masters and there's more stuff on the way this year so that's kind of why I choose to go with Callaway and well I'll probably continue to to stay with them right tipsy McStagger what keeps you doing the YouTube thing so I think the thing that keeps me doing the YouTube thing is I have like a I guess a vision of where I want it to go over the next like five to ten years and what I actually want to achieve and what I want to do. So the YouTube thing is pretty much the the core of the stuff that I want to do, sort of like outside golf, like the business stuff. So the reason I'm doing it, firstly, well firstly that is the reason because I want to grow and I want to I want it to be able to, you know, turn into the I want it to materialise into the stuff that I have planned or my ideas that I have planned. But also I just really enjoy doing it and I enjoy creating content. I actually, I'll sit down in the morning, get up at like seven o'clock. I'll sit in the front of a computer if I've got to get a video up for like three hours editing and I, I literally just don't stop. And I'm only doing that because I, I really enjoy it. So two reasons there. Right, JPH, what's the most important thing to focus on when hitting out a bunker with not much sand in it? I don't usually answer coaching questions, but I'm going to answer this one. So when a bunker doesn't have much sand in it, and we're talking about levels where there's very, very little sand, the, the most important thing that I'll focus on is not using the bounce as much as you usually would in a bunker. So that means not opening the face as much, because you open the face as much, increase the bounce, and with not much sand in there, generally the club just bounces off the bottom of the ground or what's just under that layer of sand and the ball will go miles through the green so in that situation i'll square it up and almost try and play it like a, a general pitch shot that you would play off a tight line so tom mcneil do you see yourself using a fairwood of some sort in the future if not why not yes i do i'm actually waiting for the epic free wood to come in at the moment i didn't use one originally because i when i got my set fitted at that point 
at the start of the year, I still hadn't made the decision to actually play golf. So it just didn't really feel necessary for me to actually carry freewood. But now I've changed my swing and I'm playing golf. There's definitely a gap for me to, to have a freewood in the bag. I'm going to go with the 15 degree one and play it as a 15 degree club because they do a 13 degree one. But I've got a feeling that if I hit that, it's just going to be kind of like too close to driver. So the freewood is, is going to bridge, bridge the gap. Okay, Sean. You said you recently needed to improve your short game putting chipping. How's it going so far? So it's still a work in progress that hasn't actually got to the stage of the work bit yet, I would say. My main focus since um, actually saying I wanted to play golf after working with the coach, obviously we did a long game lesson. So I'm working on my swing at the moment and I've been hitting a lot of balls and that change is starting to is starting to feel quite good and feel quite natural and produce the ball flight that I'm actually looking for. The short game, I'm actually going back to see him in two weeks time and we are going to look at putting and chipping. So I'm just waiting to, instead of you know like practicing putting and chipping until then, then completely changing my technique and then having to work on it again, I'm working on the things we worked on in the lesson because I see this as a, a long term improvement thing. Putting though, I'm waiting for a marksman putter to come through, I'm going from swinging gate to square to square and changing my stroke that way so I probably well I definitely will get on the putting green soon and get used to that as soon as it arrives so the Mr. Max Allen you mentioned in your last video you likely won't be competing in any competitions this year except open qualifying do you not think that the real life tournament practice is important to improving your game mental side slash decision making etc yeah do you know what i do agree with that and um i have been thinking about competing in a few events after open qualifying so open qualifying is going to be my first one unless i can find a tp tour or another event to play before because i really would like to actually get a bit of competitive practice in before the open qualifying because it is I mean, it's a completely different game. You can get your game ready, you can be playing really well. As soon as you get to a tournament, it can it, it is just completely different. So yes, I completely agree with what you're saying there. So I'm trying to get one just before open qualifying, then play open qualifying, then play a couple more just to keep my foot in. And as I've said before, this I, I have no expectations whatsoever this year. I have no expectations at open qualifying. I'm going there because I want to get some tournaments in or a tournament in this year keep me competitively you know in the loop um, as I don't want to go the whole year without playing tournaments and then going into next year just putting too much pressure on it and not feeling comfortable so yeah to answer your question I do think it's important and I'll be trying to play a few tournaments before really? next year Just got to East Devon Golf Club this morning. Gonna play 18 holes of Harry today. I'm not gonna be vlogging out on the course or filming much. I'm probably gonna get the camera down and film a few shots and maybe talk about it after the round. But the idea is to get like a competitive round under the belt today. See exactly what I shoot. Weather is gonna be nice today. It's pretty breezy, but um, the course should be in good condition. So it'd be interesting to see how my game is. I just thought that everyone putted before they well, they went out, but it's kind of different, isn't it? Putting's the first thing I'll do. Really? Yeah, when I get there. So I'll do putting, I'll do maybe 10 minutes of chipping, just to like get a feel. Go to the range, hit some balls, um, and then tee off. But lately I have been doing those like two range sessions, so I'll do 10 minutes of putting, go to the range, come back, do some more chipping and putting, yeah. and then five or 10 minutes on the range before I go out. That's a bit of an interesting start so far. So part the first, hold a birdie putt from like two foot on the second. Hit a very, very wild tee shot on three, which um, I then compounded that error, led to a six, which is a double. So one over, I just hit a shot into the fourth, which is playing one, three, two. Got a pitching wedge in there, a bit floaty. It's just like pitch the front of the ring, just red back off, so.
mind. We've got the left Yeah. So on the fifth hole now, which is par five downhill, I've made a bogey on the last after saving par on the third. The bogey on the last was just a poor swing off the tee in the fairway bunker. Almost made par. Um, so far, it's been like a a pretty even mixture of good swings and bad swings. Just trying to take the, the swing thoughts from the range that you've like ingrained and actually take them out to the course is not always easy, but um, right, so we're playing the par five fifth. First drive, kind of leaked it to the right. There's not much room, so I'm just gonna see if it's okay. If it is, I should have a shot at the green, but if not, then three off the tee. So I told you I'll be honest, and uh, just made it eight. So it's seven iron, sorry, six iron from 200 yards downhill, but it's like flown. It's just hit the back of the green, huge bounce into the hedge, unplayable, still in the hedge, knocked it out. Two putts after hitting three off the tee. How good is that flight though? How That's different is it? So I just made an up and down on the eight after kind of like choosing the wrong club. I've hit quite a big drive down here. It's a 460 yard hole. It looks like I've got about 80 yards. It's downhill path four. Nine feet Devon. Yeah, it's like a half, a half 60 or quarter six, about three quarter 60. Run out a bit further than expected. We've got 15 foot for buddy. Not ideal really from 74 yards. But 390 yard drive, so that's always good. Scores after nine holes, I'm five over par. Harry's four. We're playing for a tenner today. That's the little side wager we've got going on. Harry's having a head off. I'm just accepting the fact that it's the first time I've been out, so. You what? You're livid. Serious talk, huge change of plan. Harry being honest in his weird self. 5.3 thousand views in a day. Epic British Masters film. Best video I've ev ever made. Netflix series standard. 1.8 thousand views in a day. <laughs> Need a bit. 12 is very steep. I have severe doms, like severe. And uh, to the point where you walk straight legged when you can't quite bend your legs properly when you're walking. It is uh, doing no favors. Found a divot off the tee so I can, lay, uh, can go for it. That's my layup. Sit, sit. Oh. Come on, let's get a birdie. I've just hit, I've literally hit like three destructive shots. I've probably dropped about five shots, five of those six over par shots from those destructive ones, a triple on par five. Good play around because, especially when it's like breezy like this, like it's just hard Mate, to- It's a test, isn't it? It's hard to go low. The reason I joined you in the first place as well is because I've literally never broken par around here. Always struggled massively. So I 
thought I was aligning myself slightly left, but just got the clubs down. And literally, I was aligning myself right of the green. Still play, still trying to almost play for that no, draw. Yeah, Harry's just pulled me up on alignment. Um, so the first ball is gone 20 yards right of the green. Kick back in the bunker. Second shot, got open left side of the green. Letting that little fade come in. Already opening myself up, can actually make the move. And I pretty much pitched it in the hole, so. So stuck. Such a bad swing. The focus on starting the ball left. I can see it starting no, it's, left. It's that move. No, it's just spinny. That's no, no. terrible. So that's pretty much the match gone. That knocks me back to eight over par. After making triple, I've hit two shots right there, and that's the destructive shot again. We've both we've seen both of them land in the rough. Shouldn't have been a loss at all. And uh, we've lost them both, and it's not even that deep. <sighs> but we're just saying the rest of it's pretty good. That's literally three or four destructive shots that's led to those like big numbers, all the drop shots. Apart from that, I'm pretty much level par. It's very easy to say. Very easy yeah, to say that, isn't it? You've got to put it into perspective. But a lot of work in your short game. take those wild, wild rights out. I, I thought, honestly, like hitting balls on the range, I thought that wild swing was almost out. But it's just so much different. You get mate, it's goal. been like two weeks. Yeah. I haven't. I've. I've only hit what like a thousand balls. And you go. It's a big rebuild. How long did Nick Faldo take to change his swing? He was bashing a thousand balls a day. Yeah. Two years. Yeah. Played in the Ryder Cup during his swing change, didn't he? he got absolutely mugged off for it because he's playing horrendous. Everybody was saying, like, why the hell is he changing his swing? He's good enough golfer as it is, and then that worked out for him. So then again, we're all not Nick Fowler, are we? So it's piped down. Well done, great game. Yeah. Wow. So yeah, we're going to um, head into the bar, we're going to have a pint, and uh, get the stats done. I'll have a chat with you about that after. 79, that was, se <laughs> which is nine over around around East Devon. Now I'll just give you a bit of a backstory. East Devon is, um, it's not the easiest course, it's 6,200 yards, which is obviously short. It's the type of course, it's like a heathland, past 70. You can't really, you can miss it by a bit, if you miss it by a lot, you generally have a lost ball. So looking at this round, let's start with some stats. So I've hit seven greens. It's not a lot of greens. My short game is quite good, with the greens that I actually missed where I didn't lose a ball, so I got near the green, I was making up and down like 75% from around the green, so that's good. So I've made a double and two triples, which is pretty much all the shots that I've dropped. And that was all from that destructive big right, which is strength, of course. And you've lost it, can't find it again. In fact, four of those have led to, well, actually it's five. Five big rights have led to those scores. So take that away, and you're not far away to having like an all right score around East Devon. Obviously, you can't say that. It's golf. So I told you, I'll be honest. And I'm, I'm, th this is what this series is about. It's, um, I've taken like five steps back. To go forward but it doesn't it doesn't matter this is two weeks since I made a swing change first time on the golf course my score is pretty irrelevant I just want to take what I can from that score hey I okay I still missed that shot there I'm still hitting that shot so I need more work on the range 
you can't get that unless you're actually going on the golf course and trying to put a score together. So we continue. As always, I mean, this is going to be like next year till we get the game together. Till I, um, I'm comfortably making a golf swing that I can take to the golf course and score with. It's a big work in progress. Thanks for watching this long vlog. I'm sorry at times if it is a bit negative, but it's just the battle, it's like the ongoing battle. That's one of the reasons why I'm, I like this game and that I'm doing this, is put yourself through a bit of shit. But um, it's worth it in the end. Just gotta keep analyzing, keep working, and we'll get there. Thanks for watching. And um, yeah, we'll see you in the next one, which will be more of the same, working on the game, and uh, showing you what's going on. Thanks for watching guys, I'll see you soon.